Hi, I'm Mihaela from Learn Polymer Clay and I invite you to make festive, beautiful polymer clay jewelry pieces with me. I'm working with black polymer clay that I have previously conditioned and then I passed it through the setting number two of my Atlas pasta machine because I intend to um, use um, a cutter, a round cutter and thus I am making sure that I'm making beads that are consistent in size uh, and then uh, you'll have to uh, properly condition the polymer clay and then roll it between your hands and uh, first I rolled it into a ball and then I roll it into an olive shape then I used um, a skewer to poke a hole inside the, the bead um, and then uh, I've um, made a rotary movement inside the bead to enlarge the holes um, and then I just attached uh, um, eyelets on, on the right and on the left and then I've worked a little bit on the shape of the bead because I want um, a barrel shaped bead for this project and uh, uh, you'll have to work a little bit on, 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 on the bead and when you are happy with the barrel shape of the bead uh, you can use uh, small um, jump rings and uh, decorate the bead all around the center of the bead with small jump rings and you'll just have to press them slightly into the bead but not too hard because you don't want to distort the shape of the bead of course and then I'm going to use nail art tiny crystals with a pointy back and I'm going to press them into the clay um, inside the, the, jump, the jump rings the silver color jump rings and I'm going to apply such uh, tiny uh, rhinestones all around um, the central line of the bead inside the, the jump rings and uh, again you'll have to press a little bit on these um, uh, stones crystal uh, rhinestones to make sure that they are going to stay in place while you are still working on the bead and uh, while you are baking the bead and uh, we are going to apply uh, resin or, or um, at least I intend to apply a thin layer of resin on top so this uh, layer of resin will uh, keep these um, rhinestone pieces in place if you don't want to finish these pieces with resin on top you could um, either use liquid clay um, and then press these rhinestones into the polymer clay but um, I would rather use um, um, a very strong glue Uh, I would bake these pieces with the rhinestone on and then I would take them off and I would glue them with a very strong glue that you know works well with polymer clay and then I decided to use um, purple nail art glitter uh, and I'm just using my fingers to apply uh, nail art glitter in some areas and they are um, purple in some areas and uh, they, they have different reflections and then I decided to add a little bit of um, uh, gray um, silver silver gray um, again nail art um, glitter and I'm uh, doing my best to cover the area around um, the jump rings as well and 
and uh, in fact these uh, nail art glitters have a very beautiful holographic effect you when you look um, at the purple nail art glitter you will see some purple and some um, blue and um, other uh, shades as well so they have a holographic effect uh, and then I use the same cutter and I cut out um, the same amount of clay and I'm making a second bead um, and I used um, and I put the, um, the clay uh, on top of this on the beater that I had on my working table so I um, used the clay to collect the beater and I will do the same thing. I will um, um, form the bead into a ball and then I would um, make it an oval, olive shaped ball. Then I would use, um, then I used the skewer to poke a hole. I attached the eyelets on, on, on the right and on the left. Um, I pressed the eyelets into the bead and then I shaped it into a barrel shaped bead. Uh, and then again I used the same type of silver color jump rings that I placed in the in the central line of the bead and uh, you will have to slightly press these jump rings into the bead but in the same time you, you should be very careful not to distort the shape of the bead so again I'm, I'm pressing them into the bead I'm making sure that I like the shape of the bead and again I'm going to use the nail art uh, tiny decorations white pearls and white crystals and I'm going to put one white little pearl bead and then one crystal and then one little pearl bead and a crystal and so on and so forth Uh, and then I decided to uh, press into the bead some uh, uh, metallic hard nail art decorations. I thought they um, they made, made the bead even more interesting. And I finished by applying tiny, 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 tiny uh, gold metal beads. I personally love nail art decorations. They work great with polymer clay. I use them a lot to embellish my clay pieces. And um, um, uh, even though uh, the, the white tiny pearl beads are um, acrylic beads, um, I tested them in the oven and um, they did not melt so when using acrylic beads you should be very careful because um, they are plastic beads and there is a risk of them melting in the oven. Uh, if you have doubts about these acrylic beads in the oven you can take them out um, and glue them uh, even superficially after baking the pieces and then you can apply resin if you want to and then I decided to use again um, holographic gray color um, nail art it, it um, shines in it has very beautiful holographic effects in fact you will see all the colors of the rainbow in in these holographic pieces especially in the gray in the gray um, in the gray holographic glitter and then you'll just have to bake your pieces for 40 minutes at the recommended temperature I put them on top of a metallic cutter 
so that um, they would keep their their shape um, and then I let the clay cool down um, and then I uh, I used the brush uh, and I applied a thin layer of UV resin on top of the beads and uh, on, on top of the um, decorations as well and then I just used my UV lamp and uh, I cured the resin for more inspiration for your work with polymer clay.